Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about whether or not I would get involved in computer science in 2025. I had some people in the comments asking, is it still worth it? And I wanted to answer that question. Yes, if you are pursuing personal reasons, that is a completely valid reason to get into computer science and software in 2025. If you have an app or a website or if you have some idea that you think is is worth doing, especially for your own purposes, if you have no intention of even selling it, you just want something in your life, or if you want to get into game development or whatever else might, might there be that has the barrier to entry of software, getting into it as a dedicated hobby part-time is actually a very realistic goal, especially if it's something like a website, because that's pretty simple to put together, especially with modern AI. If you just let GPT lead you by the hand, you can absolutely put together and deploy a website pretty easily without a CS background. And it is still, despite the market, it is still a valuable skill. However, I think almost all of the value is in personal goals. Again, an app, a website, you want to make a game, whatever. Your personal goal is probably the only good reason to get into CS. If you want to get into CS to get a CS job, to be a software developer, that is probably not worth it. Sorry to say. If you have a healthy body, you'll probably make more money, arguably with less effort, <laughs> <laughs> being like an, an electrician. The reality is that the money for trades is going to keep going up. The money for software is going to keep going down. And this uh, leverage dynamic seemed to have swung in the other direction in the last couple of years. And there's no reason to believe it's going to change. I think it's actually going to get much more dramatic. I think in... 25 years from now, there will be nothing that you can justify paying a human being to do except maybe really low pay labor jobs, jobs that are not uniform. So the reason that it's so hard to get a robot to be a plumber is because a plumber has to operate in so many different conditions and for such extended periods of time, plumbers have to crawl into small spaces and work around corners and they have to articulate and they have to have a, a degree of nuance in their movement that it's not currently realistic in robotics. However, that will eventually be solved. It probably just won't be solved for another generation. So going into something like that is safe. However, you're, you have to understand that replacement is always going to be relative to what you're being paid. That's why well-paid people like engineers and I think very soon lawyers and doctors and whatnot are all going to get the chop because they're so expensive. A law firm that's employing a hundred lawyers would kill, they would pay anything almost in order to get rid of those lawyers and replace them with an AI. Um, it's just the way it is. So how much you're paid relative to how dynamic your job is and what what degree of physicality is required. Obviously, writing software doesn't require any physicality, so that's pretty pretty uh, top of the list in terms of replacement. If you're just digging holes for a living for $5 an hour, you probably won't be replaced anytime soon. Uh, obviously, you might be replaced by a backhoe. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, that's a terrible example. Yeah, an automated backhoe. But you understand what I'm saying here. So... If you're getting into software for personal reasons and you're not getting into it with the intention of making it a career, I think it's fantastic. And I think that's actually, ironically, the best way to grow this into a career. If you determine that, well, I've got this app idea, I've got this website, and I really want to make this game in Unreal and, and publish it on Steam, give yourself the next 24 months Learn how to make the app, make it, deploy it on whatever app store. Learn how to make the website, deploy it. Learn how to make the game, publish it. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of years from now, the irony is that this hobby now has actually given you the skills 
where you might have something that's valuable to a company. But if you're going from nothing today and you're trying to go directly from A to B, from nothing to a professional role in the industry, I would say it is not hopeless, but almost hopeless. The hill that you have to climb is not only getting taller, but it's becoming more and severe. You're ice skating uphill, basically. The, it's, not, it's not good enough to just go fast. You have to go fast and you have to accelerate and your acceleration of the knowledge that you're getting has to exceed the rate of change in the market. And I know that I'm a boot camp kid, so I don't have a CS degree. And so I do personally feel like I'm missing foundational knowledge that the CS people got because they spent four years at a university not learning the icing on the cake, but instead learning about eggs and flour and salt and sugar. They learned the foundational stuff for four years, and then they get out of college and they start learning React and Node and these other things. I learned how to run before I could walk. And anybody who's getting into it without a CS background is probably going to have that same experience. You're going to learn before you're going to learn to run before you can walk, and then you are going to be negatively judged for not having that foundational knowledge, even though realistically, you're never going to use it. I know that that's an unpopular opinion. I know that there's a lot of engineers who are going to watch this video who are going to be like, harumph! <laughs> the reality is the super majority of developers will effectively never use the more nuanced parts of computer science. They'll effectively never use the more advanced algorithms and they'll effectively never have to. They'll never be in a, a situation where there's any reason for them to understand computer science at a sincerely deep level. The super majority of developers are out here creating React pages and managing databases with Node. And you don't actually need any foundational CS understanding to do those jobs very effectively. The problem is you will be judged for not having that information. And that's just a, a, a matter of the industry, the way it is right now. There's hundreds of thousands of unemployed devs. And there's soon to be many more with these layoffs in the government. And so companies are in a position where they can hire exclusively exceptional people. Because they'll put a post on LinkedIn or Indeed and there'll be 500 applicants in the first hour. And needless to say, if you think that you're going to throw your application into that pile of shit and get a good outcome, I think that's a little bit delusional. I think that we don't want to be lying to ourselves. And so to recap, absolutely get into software in 2025, but do so for the right reasons. If you have an app or a website or a game that you want to see made, that is a legitimately, sincerely um, realistic goal, uh, especially with AI. Don't shy away from AI. Lean into GPT and DeepSeek and Gemini. Lean into these AIs and let them fill in the blanks. I have one of the hobbies I have that's sort of a low priority hobby is game development over the last couple of years. I've just been, every now and then I'll touch on it, I'll throw a few dozen hours into Unreal Engine to learn a little bit more about it, learn a little bit more. And each time I do, I have GPT up on a second monitor. Anytime I'm confused about something, especially operating the, the actual program, because Unreal Engine is unbelievably complex. I just ask GPT, I'm like, hey, I want to do this. Where do I go within Unreal to find the tool that does this thing? I, I'm 100% sure this can be done. I just don't know where it is or how to do it. And for purposes like that, GPT and other AIs are exceptional. And you can do the same thing with app development. You can do the same thing with websites. And so that is an extremely valid reason. If you want a job in the industry, you should probably look elsewhere. It's, it's just not very realistic these days. So that's it for today. Buy my book, Seeking Squalor, Toilet Umbrellas and Champagne Chandeliers on Amazon, and subscribe and comment below. Uh, it really helps the algorithm. Give it a thumbs up and all that other stuff.
<laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.